I do not own the rights to the music. I do not own the rights to the music. I do not own the rights to the music. Praise the Lord, everybody. How you doing? My name is Sister Vanessa. This is the Lord's name to be praised ministry. It's a weekly Bible study. And today we're going into lesson nine, uh, God's divine glory return. It's found in Ezekiel 40 and 43, verse 1 through the 12th verse. Praise God. Get your Bibles out. Get your books out. Let's get into the, get into the word of study. And when and so the uh, Bible truth of God's calming presence can be felt in sacred places where he is truly worshipped. That is true. When we get to praise the Lord and, and, and praying in, in spirit and singing in the spirit, we're singing to him. So a lot of us, like me, don't have a beautiful voice, but I got a voice. But then the thing, everything that has breath, praise you, Lord. We give God the praises of honor and glory. And it's good to have a gift from God to have a beautiful voice, too. We got to sing in the spirit. Sing with the understanding. Know what you're singing about, too. And we're going to sing. We're, this lesson is so merciful. It's so, so good. God is so merciful. Praise God. So, remember verse, And the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Praise God. The Bible lets us know we to be filled with the Spirit. Praise God. And this lesson aim is by the end of the lesson, you your students will comprehend, which understand, the vision of God's holy and merciful glory in the temple. Associated a sense of holiness, a place with the presence and mercy of God, and grow in respect for the sacredness of worship setting. Amen. Praise God. We come to church to worship, and we worship him at home, everywhere. Praise, praise God. It's a reason to get in there and just have a good time in the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. And the back, and so, um, uh, the uh, Ezekiel, whose name means strengthened by God. Uh, before we get go any further, I, I don't know if I said that. I got a, a few announcements. I'm gonna pray, and we're gonna jump, get back in it. But, uh, Lord's willing, this Sunday I'll be teaching Sunday school. Of uh, 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 ten o'clock on the, on under uh, my, on my Facebook under Vanessa McClendon, at twelve o'clock my pastor Superintendent Elder Reginald Bradley will be bringing forth the word on on the church's Facebook on the Gospel True Light Church of God in Christ. Tuesday First Lady Dorothy V Bradley will be teaching uh, the prayer and Bible band, and that that'll be on Gospel True Light Church of God in Christ. We appreciate you been joining us. We appreciate you joining us. Praise the Lord. Um, and uh, Father, we just thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Open up our understanding. Give me what to say, what not to say, Lord God. Have your way. Let the word be applied tomorrow. Why not sin against the Lord? Let's save everywhere. Our youth, old, the babies, on up to the uh, uh, old uh, people, old age, all people. Everybody needs the Lord. Oh, God, I ask you to bless and look all, all, all over in Israel, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Over there, Lord God. Oh, uh, bring peace to that Israel. Oh, God, I ask you to uh, look on the other nations that are going through the people in, 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 uh, in other in other countries, Lord God. Give my mind everywhere to, that they have not accepted. Give my mind to say, what must I do to be saved, Lord God? Oh, God, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So Ezekiel, prophet, and a priest. He's, his name means strengthened by God. And he grew up in Jerusalem. You know, there was a northern king and a southern kingdom. We're talking about the southern kingdom, which has Judah and, and, uh, and Benjamin. These two tribes are together in the southern kingdom. And uh, it's Judah. And so uh, he was trained as, as a priest as, uh, in, to work in the temple. But he was, you know, he, just when he was coming up, he was trained. Praise God. And the temple, I'm talking about the Solomon's temple. That was, the, at that time, was there at the time. And he was, and then uh, Nebuchadnezzar came over three times and deported uh, the people, took uh, groups of people. And Ezekiel was the first one with other group, other people to go in that first group. They went over, took over to uh, Babylon. Praise God. But God was ministering to God's people before uh, uh, Babylon, uh, Nebuchadnezzar came over to take God's people. He was there was there was there was woe preaching about you need to get you need to 
stop worshiping other gods and everything. It was warning before that destruction. And the people didn't take heed. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. And they were worshiping idols and looking at the other nations around them, copying at the word that they were doing, uh, worshiping idols and things. So God got tired of it. He had ministered. He had people preach to them. And Isaiah ministered to them. Uh, and Jeremiah ministered to them. And then eventually, the, 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 uh, God allowed the enemy to come, which is uh, Babylon, to come and chastise his people. And he used them to correct, to chastise the people, to get it right. And so uh, the, the first deportation, like I say, was uh, Ezekiel was taken over, uh, taken over to, um, by Nebuchadnezzar, taken over to Babylon. And this book, Ezekiel, was written by Ezekiel. And uh, praise God. And he, the Lord gave Ezekiel a vision, a vision of when you be awake. He has a, this is a godly inspired vision that he, you know, he's being awake that he can see it. But you know, when you sleep, you get a, uh, if, you, if you had a dream or, or it, while you sleep. But this man was awake and uh, he had this vision. Praise God. And God was, the Holy Ghost was, was, was a, a, giving us, him these revelations. Praise God. And so, uh, and so he had a vision too. We've seen a previous chapter about the about this temple that's supposed to come. This is way in the future. In the future. I don't know if it's I'm kinda of think it might be in the millennium time, but maybe not. But this is a temple that he described it. God of the Holy Ghost gave to him the uh, understanding uh details about this, this future temple of God. Praise God. And uh so uh these people they the temple that when they leave and go to, when uh, they're taken over to Babylon, and there'll be three deportation, that that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed and burned to fire. It's going to be, and they, and so Nebuchadnezzar took all the valuable stuff that was in the Solomon's temple. After the, the third de, uh, deportation, when he came over and just destroyed the city, broke down the wall and everything. And there was a prophecy that there was going to be a temple built again. Uh, that was, uh, but this wasn't. This is not the temple that was destruction that were given to Ezekiel. This is future event. There was another temple that was constructed up uh, after seventy years when they went in captivity, and the reason why they had seventy years of captivity because they weren't observing the Sabbath yearly Sabbath, the, uh, the the yearly Sabbath. I think it's seven years or so. The year Sabbath, and uh, they had to uh, God allow that land to rest, and and they went on to captivity and, and, and God let them know that you know to uh, you know you might as well get comfortable be a while before you come back home but they but after seven years they exact day they they came they there was a decree by Cyrus to return back home and they returned back home and uh, the Super Bowl and I think it's about under 50,000 people returned back and so they started you know doing doing uh, building what they did they put the uh, they ended up starting on the temple and thinking you know and then later the uh, uh, Nehemiah came with the, the walls being put up. So this is the temple that we're, that temple, this temple we're talking about, Ezekiel, is is further than that because that temple that, he, that Zerubbabel built, uh, uh, and later on uh, Herod would add, add, add additions to that temple. It was destroyed in 70 AD. So this temple here that Ezekiel is talking about is further on. It's not this one. It's not this the, the temple of our Lord of Solomon. Okay, so um, with these people over in, in, in Babylon, and uh, and so this vision provided, the vision that Ezekiel had, they're away from home, and, no, and so providing encouragement to God's people, the Israelites, who were living in a foreign land, praise God, separated from their homeland, because they were taken in captivity, and from the temple, praise God, hallelujah. When you know that temple was the center of worship, praise God, where they can go and worship the Lord. And, uh, but their bodies are bodies of the temple of God. That's in the Old Testament, praise God. So you think of the description of the temple was was this beautiful temple that he, God gave him this vision, this for way in the future. Uh, it means it's going to be the return of God's glory to dwell there and Praise God. And it's the restoration of his people, uh, uh, of the nation Israel, with their relationship with the Lord. And so this, um, you know, and also about the worship thing. 
I mean, it's just a blessing to get in there and just, just what the Lord has done for us and have a worship and glorify. God wants us to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, you can do all this and everything. You got to have a, we got to have a life behind it. Praise God. So, uh, Ezekiel is giving instruction, like I say, instruction for the layout of this temple. Praise God. But what's another thing he's doing? He's calling people to re for repentance. And even though the people are over in captivity, why are the people over in captivity? I believe it's the same time, maybe around where Jeremiah is crying out to the people to get right with the Lord because you're going to go over there too. And they don't want to listen because they're false prophets teaching other things. But, you know, they, uh, you know, let any man, let them hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. When God is speaking, we need to listen and take heed. And so, uh, and so he's over there. He's over in over there in, in Babylon, and and uh, when the people accept and want to listen, he's letting them know. You explain in, in detail uh, about that vision to God's people. Uh, I'm talking about Ezekiel, and so I like so he's preaching. He's telling people over there. Ezekiel's telling people to repent and get it right. Renew your relationship with the Lord. Praise God. And he's not the only one that's ministering over in Jer Jeremiah's ministering for people to get right with the Lord. Because you're going over there. And Ezekiel's already there. And he's letting people know you need to repent and get it right with the Lord. Pray, renew your commitment with the Lord. And he's not the, these two aren't the only uh, prophets that were ministering. There were other prophets that were ministering too about getting telling them you need to get right with the Lord. Get away from the idol worship. Anything you put before the Lord is a God. Just be put first before God. So Ezekiel's vision reminds Israelites that of the holiness, his vision of God is holy, be holy, and the need to approach him in reverence and respect and humility. Praise God. As they look forward to the day, this 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 temple that will be built. Praise God. Uh and 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 before in the meantime, um in the you know the it's a temple that will be built. It was props that will be built in the future one that Ezekiel talked about. But they will return back, we know, to the land when they went captivity 70 years. And uh, they'll start on that Zerubbabel temple, but there was one following that one. Okay, so uh, 43. After he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east, so the Lord... So he said, so the, the east was traditionally, its direction is divine revelation. God, remember he's in a vision. He has a vision. Divine, godly re revelation. And it's a new beginning. And this imagery of God's glory returning to the temple symbolized the restoration of his presence among his people. It's powerful reminder that God is faithful to his part. We know he's faithful. Praise God. And he's, you know, he's, you know, these people had to be chastised for their disobedience. But God is, that God is, uh, hand is stretched out still. And he's merciful for people to get it right. Praise God. And this event uh, demonstrates that every, even in times of exile, even though they're over in another, over in, in, in uh, Babylon, and things look bad, God's presence, you know, God promised to be with us and never leave us. And so God's presence can return and be a new renewal for a person to get it right when they repent, get it right. Confess their sins, come free, faithful and just to forgive their sins and cleanse for all unrighteousness. Praise God. God wants to renew that relationship with him. Praise God. And to separate, what separate people uh, from the relationship with the Lord is sin. 43 and 2. And behold, the glory of God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like, I'm reading Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 2. And his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the, the earth shined with his glory. Praise God. So this voice symbol the divine authority and power. God speaks. Things happen. And uh, magnificent things happen. Awesome. Praise God. And, and Ezekiel is witnessing in his vision. And the voice is like the roar of many waters, the overwhelming uh, of nature. How everything is obeyed. 23 so in psalm 29 3 says the voice of the lord is upon the water the god of glory thunders the lord is upon many waters uh, in psalm 29 and 4 
The voice of the Lord is powerful. And the voice of the Lord is, is full of majesty. His voice is emphasizing the awe-inspiring awe and magic, majestic nature of God's presence. Praise God. When you get to looking at the Lord, looking at what it is. I mean, we can't look at God and live, but we can look at his creation. Just looking up in the sky and the animals busy doing this and that. It's God's creation. It's magnificent and wonderful. How the sun rises in the, in the, in the, rise in the east and sets in the west. How everything is doing just what God wanted to do. It's awesome, God. Praise God. Awesome. And how... Uh, you plant food, and I had a little garden this year, seeds and stuff, how, how God gives that food a body as it grows. He gives it a body and bears fruit. Okay, three, third verse. And it was according to the appearance of the vision, which I saw, praise God, praise God, even according to the vision that I saw when I, when I came to destroy the city. And the vision was like the vision that I saw at the river Chebar. And it fell upon my face. So, uh, so this is that river Chiba is connected with the Euphrates uh, River. This is where it's located. And it's in they're already in Babylon. Praise God! It's like a and they have like a taken over captivity, but they taken over into a, a Jewish settlement. Settlement. This is where the location of the people that was taken into captivity. So what the Ezekiel is doing? He falls face down in response to this vision. Highlight his humility, humility and reverence before the Lord. This act also reflects the proper response and recognition of holiness. God is a holy God. He's a sovereign God. does whatever he want to do. It's a reminder for readers to approach God. This is how we approach God. Humility and reverence. Acknowledge he is great. King of kings. And authority over everything. Praise God. And this serves as a powerful demonstration of Ezekiel's devotion and how... He, and, and submission to God's will. We got to submit to the Lord. Praise God to his will. Praise God. 43 and 4. And so the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect, prospect is toward the east. So God's glory entered to the east gate. It's not only signified his acceptance of the new temple, but also represents a renewed covenant relationship with Israel. Dependent upon their repentance and faithfulness to worship. It depends on, you know, you have we have to make sure I get it right. Get it right with the Lord. Lay aside every weight in the sin. Those will easily beset us. Praise God. Well, I'm with patience that the race is set before us. Praise God. The author and finisher of our faith. I know I left some verses or something out there, but God is so merciful. Yeah, he's talking about the, this restoring. This is his vision of this temple. This is a vision and the God, he sees it. 43 and 5. So the spirit took me up, brought me into the inner court of this vision of this temple as in the future. Behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the Lord oh boy, it just made me think. Praise God. The Lord spirit, spirit filled me up and took me into the inner court where I saw the temple. The, the temple was filled with the glory of the Lord. Praise God. And you know, to experience the Lord's presence, praise God, that's wonderful. Praise God. And uh, so the prophet Ezekiel chain shared the transformation vision in, in, in this temple. This is a vision. We're signifying the renewed presence among this renewed relationship among his people. Praise after that broken relationship, after we're disobeying the Lord over in Jerusalem, refused by worshiping idol God. But God wants to restore him back. Praise God. And he's uh, uh, this vision. Uh, so, uh, six, and I heard him speaking. God speaking unto me. I heard him speaking to me out of the house. And a man stood by me. And a man stood beside me there. And I heard the Lord speak to me out of the temple. So, the prophet Ezekiel speaks of the glory of the Lord filling the temple. This is a powerful moment symbolizing the return of God's presence. To his people after they departed due to their disobedience and sin. Throughout the book of Ezekiel, we see the theme of God's glory departing from the temple because his glory departed. This is chapter 11 of Ezekiel. 
he departed from the temple because of the wickedness of the people. But here is a verse. We witness the restoration of God's glory. This restoration uh, signifies God's mercy. He wants to restore and faithful to his covenant with his people. But there's a part we have to do. Praise God. Uh, 47. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the, the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. In my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, that's worshiping other gods, by the carcass of their kings and their high places, going to worship high, going out to place of worshiping other idols. So uh, God proclaimed that he will come back to the temple to reign. It was his throne where he will stand, the place of the soles of my feet, where he will abide. This is talking about this future temple, uh, the temple that Ezekiel says, where God will abide. Neither the people of Israel nor the kings will ever again disgrace my holy name. Right? They disgrace the name by worshiping other gods. And praise God. And this shows not only God's abiding, even eternal relationship with Israel as a covenant people, but also shows God's regard for that, that land too. Praise God. That covenant land. Canaan. Most who expect a literal fulfillment of Ezekiel's temple is, 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 is in the future, uh, expected to be in the millennium. And, you know, that will be a 1,000-year reign of Christ upon the earth. Praise the Lord. And this day of, of a renewed temple, God's glory, on that day, God's glory and promise of the near dwelling will also be a day of holiness for Israel. And their sinful practice of the past, such, you know, what they were, the idolatry, will continue no more. Verse 8, in their settling of their threshold by my threshold and their post by my post and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by the abomination that they uh, uh, committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them my anger. So this is letting us know that this vision was speaking about when they were over there in, that when they were over there in, in uh, Jerusalem before they were taken captivity. This is the life that these people were living. It, they, the vision represents the passion, emphasizes the seriousness of, of Israel violating God's holiness. It's serious. It's powerful decoration. God didn't like that. He lamented how his sacred place was defiled by the people worshiping idols, practicing. Praise God. And the worship along the threshold of close, not even that far from the temple. Praise God. God wasn't happy. And they had to... They were taken over, like I said, taken over captivity for a while. Before the people were taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar in the second deportation, in the first deportation, because they were three. I believe it was the first one that he was in uh, to Judah. They were living a hypocritical life by trying to serve God in their mess, by by uh, worshiping idol gods and going to the temple uh, and trying to work, having a form of godliness, worshiping uh the Lord were the former godliness, and they were playing church. You got to be real. The thing about it that the people were ministered, they were being ministered by Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and, that, and there were others to repent before the of destruction would come. But they refused to listen. So the Bible says, Thou have no tell. The Bible says in the commandments, tell it thou, I think it was, yeah, it's uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20. Thou shalt have no other God before me. The idol is anything that you put before God. God was grieved by with them and the disgusting things that they did. And they were doing near the threshold of the Lord. Praise God. And at that time, that was, in, that was Solomon's temple. And, uh, but it was, you know, but it was destroyed, praise God, by Nebuchadnezzar, his third deportation. And uh, praise God. So 43 and 9, now let them... Put away their whoredom. The, the sin. They did all that in Jerusalem. And he's ministering to the people. Ezekiel. God is giving them a vision. He's saying, put away your whoredom, worshiping other gods, and the carcass of the kings. Far from me. 
And I would, well, you got to do something yourself for me to get, for that, to restore that relationship. So let them stop worshiping other gods. Praise God. And uh, if you do, I, I'm going to live among you forever. You have to have a changed life. So that to experience the fullness of God's presence, the Israelites were called to perf uh, commitment, uh, profound commitment to holiness and true worship. In the, and you got to pivot that that old life it should change, uh, repent. That moment. so God speaks His attention. Uh, so uh, in this pivot moment, the Lord speaks His intentions. If the people would, I'm going to be well with you if you live right. Praise God. If the people would purge and suffer their spiritual being unfaithfulness. That's why that's what Jesus said. You need. I told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Got to be born again. Jesus is the one that keeps us from falling. He comes and we baptize by spirit, by God's spirit to the body of Christ. Jesus condemns sin in the flesh. We don't have to be sin anymore because Christ is in us, the hope of glory. When we give our life to the Lord, repent. You can. Not, I'm not talking about saying words. You know, say you know, confess your mouth with your mouth and believe in thy heart. Yeah, when you believe in your heart, there's a change, and you're a brand new creature. So the passion emphasizes a clear requirement for purification, signifying a relationship anchored in faithfulness rather than being hypocrisy. This is you going to have a relationship with the Lord. You got to live right, not a hypocrit hypocritical life. You got to be faithful to the Lord. You got to be uh, saved and faithful to the Lord. God promised to uh, mix with the uh, and also, we've got to have a repentance, and God promised God comes in our life. We can live a clean life. He transform us, praise God, and 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 and, and give us the desires of His heart. When you, when Christ, we, when any man be in Christ, a new creature, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. We're brand new creatures in Christ. Transform us, praise God, praise God. And God is a Father, praise God. When we accept Christ in our life, born again spiritually, born again from above. And there's a transformation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? This body is the temple of God. For ye are the I for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. My people. Praise God. And six and seven, therefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing which and I will receive you uh, Ezekiel 43 and 10 thou son of man show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity you know to be a contract spirit praise God if you want God to wash me as white as snow cleanse me and I will receive you you gotta get it right repent get it right praise God so and uh, it says here verse I'm gonna read it again 43 and 10 and now, son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquity, and let them measure the pattern. So the Lord continues, praise God. Uh, he wants them to be, you know, when you when you have a contract, broken spirit, um, you, you, you're ashamed, you feel bad. But God washes our sins away, cleanses us from all unrighteous, brand new creature. That person has been crucified, we're crucified with Christ. You know, who God may has, has has cleaned us up and made us. We got the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He took our sins. Praise God. Nobody can condemn us because Jesus uh, paid that price for us. Praise God. We're new creatures. Okay. For well, it's a powerful vision. Ezekiel is called to describe this this temple. This, it talks about that. that uh, the future temple. Praise God. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to be uh, in glory to the Lord. It's going to fill that temple. This moment is significant of the exile because as God is encouraging the people uh, with, through Ezekiel, a hopeful vision uh, during a time of despair, even though things aren't so good for you, which are bad, God is showing, in, he's encouraging the people uh, by sh to show the specific pacification, the temple that he's going to be building. I mean, he's not going to mean that one. He's not going to build that temple, sorry. This is future temple. But it's this temple that will be built. And he gave the, de gave the detail to Ezekiel. Praise God. And he want, God wants Ezekiel, people that love the Lord, that I, uh, to describe it to the people. Praise God. And it's inspiring me to hear about spiritual things. 
Praise God. Imagine man can't understand the spiritual thing because it's spiritual this earth. Praise, I mean, so the detailed uh, structure I meant to inspire and renew the commitment of the people that were there of holiness and obedience uh, to the uh, people that want to do do the right thing when you hear all the inspiration what God has for them. Because I don't know, I've seen near heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Praise God. So we are reminded that a divine presence is directly linked to his action and faithfulness to God's command. Being faithful. Uh, 43 and 11. So if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of, uh, you know, the thing about the scripture say, Godly sorrow worketh repentance. When you are sorry, when we transgress the law of the Lord, when you godly sorrow, it works to repentance and God straightens helps us. He's the one that calls us to live right in us. Praise God. So uh so if if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house. Uh the, the tell them exactly what this house is in the future and God and we in the future and the fashion thereunto and the glory thereout and the coming explain it in details about the this future uh uh temple. Praise God. And then if they're, praise God, praise God, of all the forms, describe it in detail. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, um, so um, I think I got, yeah. So he's he's going to write it down, all write down for them so that, it, so God, it, we, it has been written down it's in the book of Ezekiel, the instructions and things about describing this temple. And it's in the previous verse. But God wants people to get right with the Lord. He want people to get right. You don't need to play in church because, you know, your sins will find you out. God knows. You. God sees everything. And he's coming. I think God is able to keep us from falling. We kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. God is keeping us. Praise God. So last verse, 12. And this is, and this is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be holy. Behold, this is the law of the of the house so in this context of David, uh, of ezekiel's prophecy vision god is saying uh that uh convey profound truth about his holiness and present among his people god will be present around you when you live right love the lord because of the, the, the um and so this particular verse emphasized the sacredness of the newly this is a vision temple is going to be whole it, Holy, because God is in there. God is holy. Praise God. And holiness already is the central part of worship as we go worship to the Lord. And uh, it's meant to, uh, you, you know, as, if, even though we're these uh, buildings and things that we go to, and they're going to go back and build that uh, the rubber bowl temple. God expects holiness. Praise God. But this temple is in the future. And the commandment to treat the entire most holy God. Uh, significant because it's a transformation extent of God's presence. Praise God. Well, let me get cut. It's just a new that relationship is restored back to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, in essence, this passage reminds us that the importance of reverence in worship. And our response is your whole holiness in our action and space designated for God. Praise God. You know, holiness is the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, he requires, be holy from holy. You know, we see all these loose things going on. And uh, it's God, is, God is, is not for that. He's, he's against living any kind of way. Because he's holy. He told Moses, take off those shoes. You're on holy ground. This is God's world. Praise God. And he's, he's sovereign. And God promised that his, his presence will be with those who respect the sanity of uh, and sanctify, you know, the dwelling, this is the temple of God. God wants us to live a sanctified, clean life, and he said he comes in and, and does it. We walk in spirit, won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, and he's dwelling. He don't expect us to live any kind of way, to do any kind of thing, be like the world, we're not of the world. We're in the world, we're not of the world. And, uh, he wants to live a holy life. People want people to let our life so shine before men. They may see a good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so uh, God expects a holy living. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this, uh, so this call to holiness, uh, to be, he's, God is letting us to, uh, Ezekiel is telling people to need to get restored back, have relationship back to the Lord.
praise God, even though they were in captivity. They needed to get it right with the Lord. So I just thank the Lord. God is calling for holiness. Praise God. And uh, the over, uh, so this theme, this theme continues to, it connects to the idea that holiness should be integrated to a, it should be in a, a believer's life. Praise God. God wants to be a royal priest, a holy nation, a kingdom of priests in this new covenant uh, context. This means, uh, this calls to holiness uh, uh, res resonate with the re with the teaching of stress, both individual and the collective responsibility. So let's let them know, we got to live right. You know, you have to restore that relationship with the Lord. You got to live right. So I thank God for his mercy. There was two things going on in the future. Uh, Millennium Temple that uh, that God has uh, given to Ezekiel, and also Ezekiel is ministering people their life, telling them about their lifestyle. You need to get it right. Praise God. He was a prophet and he was a priest, and this was a vision that he received. And uh, and then when they got were people those that wanted to get right, God let them know. I want you to explain this this future temple to the people. He was he was, he was encouraging people. They weren't. They didn't want to be there, but it's due to sin, chest tightness. But it was encouraging people that God has something for us in the future. It's really, and it's for uh, it's for uh, everyone. There's a place, you know, uh, this this new temple that would that God has had has up in uh, millennium in heaven. So I just turn. Um, I'm, I'm. I thank God for the word that went forth, and it's a uh, hard one for me, but. You know, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. He opened up our understanding. All wisdom and knowledge it all come from the Lord. I probably barely uh, scratched the surface. But, you know, I, I just thank God for giving me what he gave me. So just keep me in your prayer. God bless you. Love you. Be on next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.